Muhammad Abdi was an Egyptian Islamic jurist, religious scholar and liberal reformer, regarded as one of the key founding figures of Islamic modernism, sometimes called neo mutazalism after the medieval Islamic school of theology based on rationalism, Mutazila. He broke the rigidity of the Muslim ritual, dogma, and family ties. He also wrote, among other things, treatise on the oneness of God and a commentary on the Quran. Abdi was a Freemason and had a close relationship with the Baha'i faith. Biography Muhammad Abdi was born in 1849 to a Turkish father and Arab mother in Lower Egypt. His family was of the Egyptian elite. His father was part of the Irumid, or the local ruling elite. His mother was part of the Ashraf. He was educated in Tantu at a private school. When he turned 13, he was sent to the Ahmadi Mosque, which was one of the largest educational institutions in Egypt. A while later Abdu ran away from school and got married. He enrolled at Al-Azhar University in 1866. Abdu studied logic, philosophy and Islamic mysticism at the Al-Azhar University in Cairo. He was a student of Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, a philosopher and Muslim religious reformer who advocated pan-Islamism to resist European colonialism. Under al-Afghani's influence, Abdu combined journalism, politics, and his own fascination in Islamic mystical spirituality. Al-Afghani taught Abdu about the problems of Egypt and the Islamic world and about the technological achievements of the West. In 1877, Abdi was granted the degree of alim and he started to teach logic, theology and ethics at Al-Azhar. In 1878, he was appointed professor of history at Cairo's teacher's training college Dar al-Ulam, later incorporated into Cairo University. He was also appointed to teach Arabic at the Khadivial School of Languages. Abdi was appointed editor-in-chief of al-Waqai al-Masriya, the official state newspaper. He was dedicated to reforming all aspects of Egyptian society and believed that education was the best way to achieve this goal. He was in favor of a good religious education, which would strengthen a child's morals, and a scientific education, which would nurture a child's ability to reason. In his articles he criticized corruption, superstition, and the luxurious lives of the rich. In 1879, due to his political activity, Jamal al-Din al-Afghani was exiled and Abdu was exiled to his home village. The following year he was granted control of the National Gazette and used this as a means to spread his anti-colonial ideas, and the need for social and religious reforms. He was exiled from Egypt by the British in 1882 for six years, for supporting the Egyptian nationalist revolt led by Ahmed O'Rabi in 1879. He had stated that every society should be allowed to choose a suitable form of government based on its history and its present circumstances. Abdu spent several years in Ottoman Lebanon, where he helped establish an Islamic educational system. In 1884 he moved to Paris, France where he joined al-Afghani in publishing The Firmist Bond, an Islamic revolutionary journal that promoted anti-British views. Abdu also visited Britain and discussed the state of Egypt and Sudan with high-ranking officials. In 1885, after brief stays in England and Tunisia, he returned to Beirut as a teacher, and was surrounded by scholars from different religious backgrounds. During his stay there he dedicated his efforts toward furthering respect and friendship between Islam, Christianity and Judaism. When he returned to Egypt in 1888, Abdu began his legal career. He was appointed judge in the courts of first instance of the native tribunals and in 1891, he became a consultative member of the Court of Appeal. In 1899, he was appointed Grand Mufti of Egypt, the highest Islamic title, and he held this position until he died. As a judge, he was involved in many decisions some of which were considered liberal such as the ability to utilize meat butchered by non-Muslims and the acceptance of loan interest. His liberal views endeared him to the British. 
in particular Lord Cromer. However it also caused a rift between him and the Khedive Abbas Helmi and the nationalist leader Mustafa Kamal. While he was in Egypt, Abd U founded a religious society became president of a society for the revival of Arab sciences and worked towards reforming Al-Azhar University by putting forth proposals to improve examinations, the curriculum and the working conditions for both professors and students. He traveled a great deal and met with European scholars in Cambridge and Oxford University. He studied French law and read a great many European and Arab works in the libraries of Vienna and Berlin. The conclusions he drew from his travels were that Muslims suffer from ignorance about their own religion and the despotism of unjust rulers. Muhammad Abdu died in Alexandria on the 11th of July 1905. People from all around the world sent their condolences. Thought. I went to the West and saw Islam, but no Muslims. I got back to the East and saw Muslims, but not Islam. Muhammad Abdu Muhammad Abdu argued that Muslims could not simply rely on the interpretations of texts provided by medieval clerics. They needed to use reason to keep up with changing times. He said that in Islam man was not created to be led by a bridle, man was given intelligence so that he could be guided by knowledge. According to Abdu, a teacher's role was to direct men towards study. He believed that Islam encouraged men to detach from the world of their ancestors and that Islam reproved the slavish imitation of tradition. He said that the two greatest possessions relating to religion that man was graced with were independence of will and independence of thought and opinion. It was with the help of these tools that he could attain happiness. He believed that the growth of Western civilization in Europe was based on these two principles. He thought that Europeans were roused to act after a large number of them were able to exercise their choice and to seek out facts with their minds. His Muslim opponents refer to him as an infidel, however, his followers called him a sage, a reviver of religion and a reforming leader. He is conventionally graced with the epithets Al-Ustad al-Imam and Al-Sheikh al-Mufti. In his works, he portrays God as educating humanity from its childhood through its youth and then on to adulthood. According to him, Islam is the only religion whose dogmas can be proven by reasoning. Abdu does not advocate returning to the early stages of Islam. He was against polygamy and thought that it was an archaic custom. He believed in a form of Islam that would liberate men from enslavement, provide equal rights for all human beings, abolish the religious scholars' monopoly on exegesis and abolish racial discrimination and religious compulsion. Muhammad Abdu made great efforts to preach harmony between Sunnis and Shias. Broadly speaking, he preached brotherhood between all schools of thought in Islam. However, he criticized what he perceived as errors such as superstitions coming from popular Sufism. Abdu regularly called for better friendship between religious communities. As Christianity was the second biggest religion in Egypt, he devoted special efforts towards friendship between Muslims and Christians. He had many Christian friends and many a time he stood up to defend Copts. During the Urubi revolt, some Muslim mobs had misguidedly attacked a number of Copts resulting from their anger against European colonialism. Abdu's collected works have been compiled and published in five volumes by Muhammad I. Mara, Freemason. At the age of 28 Abdu joined a Masonic lodge, the Korkab al Shark. Its members included Prince Tawfiq, the Khedive's son and heir, leading personalities such as Muhammad Sharif Pasha, who had been a minister, Suleiman Abazar Pasha and Saad Alul. A.M. Broadbent declared that Sheikh Abdu was no dangerous fanatic or religious enthusiast for he belonged to the broadest school of Muslim thought held a political creed akin to pure republicanism, and was a zealous master of a Masonic lodge, in line with Masonic principles. Abdu sought to encourage unity with all religious traditions. 
He stated that, I hope to see the two great religions, Islam and Christianity hand in hand, embracing each other. Then the Torah and the Bible and the Quran will become books supporting one another being read everywhere, and respected by every nation. He added that he was looking forward to seeing Muslims read the Torah and the Bible. Abdi was asked why he and Afghani had become Masons. He replied that it was for a political and social purpose. Abdu and the Baha'i faith, like his teacher, Abdu was associated with the Baha'i faith, which had made deliberate efforts to spread the faith to Egypt, establishing themselves in Alexandria and Cairo beginning in the late 1860s. Abdu met the leader of the Baha'is, Abdu al-Baha, at a time when they had similar goals. Remarking on backquote Abdu al-Baha's excellence in religious science and diplomacy, Abdu said of him that, he, is more than that. Indeed, he is a great man. He is the man who deserves to have the epithet applied to him. He also praised Baha'i scholar Mirza Abul Fadl, but never met him. Works. Peak of eloquence with comments. Other works by Muhammad backquote Abdu Risalat al tawhid Tafsir Surat al asr Cairo, Tafsir Juz Amma, al Matb, al Amiria, Cairo, Tafsir Mana, 12 volumes, Muhammad Abdu, Asasur says idea qt's philosophic say religious users, Cairo, Tafsir al Quran al Hakim al Mustahir by Tafsir al Mana, 12 vols, with indices, Cairo, Fatih Hit al Kitab, Tafsir al Ustad al Imam, Kitab al Tahir, Cairo, Juris Min al Quran al Karim, ed. by Tahir al Tanaki, Dar al Hilal, Cairo, The Theology of Unity, Trans. by Ishak Musarad and Kenneth Cragg, London.